welcome to the show. In today's episode I'm going to be looking at this stationary steam engine which was made by the company Mamod. Now this model's quite old, it probably dates back to about the 1960s or 70s, but Mamod are still going today. So let's see what we need to get this running. Essentially a steam engine requires three different things to operate. You need a heat source, which will be fire in this case. You need water in the boiler and you'll also need oil to lubricate the moving parts. Now whether or not you've got a, an actual full size steam locomotive or just a scaled down model, they all work on the exact same principle. So to generate the heat source, you can use these uh, solid fuel tablets, which essentially are wax tablets with paraffin in them but I'm going to be using methylated spirits because I find it a bit more efficient. Most of the older model steam engines will be designed to run off methylated spirits, or at least their burning trays will be. So nowadays either the solid fuel tablets or gas is actually preferred and it's not from an efficiency point of view, it's actually from a safety point of view. So the method is very efficient at boiling the water and making a steam engine run. So I'm just going to pour it into the little tray here. There we go. So it's got a nice deep bottom here, the reservoir to hold the liquid and on the top there's a wire mesh which helps the liquid vaporise because with meths it's the vapour that burns, not the liquid, much like petrol. So if I light it now you'll see it burns with a nice blue flame. Move the bottle away. If I turn the light off you'll see it burn a lot better. So the whole safety thing comes into it really because the liquid can pour out. If you imagine a child playing with their model steam engine inside the house, let's say on a carpet, and they accidentally knock it over and the meths go everywhere, you're basically going to start a house fire like that. And the meths aren't the easiest thing to put out when they get hot and get going, so I just uh, seem to have set fire to my bench. Ah, there we go. Oh! There you go. You get the idea. So before you really deal with the fire, the most important thing when it comes to a steam engine is making sure that the boiler actually has water inside. If you were to heat up the boiler without any water, it could actually damage the silver solder internally and would cause it to melt and it would cause a steam leak, um, which would need repairing. So this one, by the looks of it, has had a repair in the past by a previous owner who's done this incredibly neat job here with a huge blob of solder. So checking the water level inside the boiler is very important. Uh, on this model steamboat, this actually has a Willisco steam engine, which has a sight glass here. If I shake the engine, you can see the level of the water just under the halfway mark, so I'd know I'd need to top that up. But if we look at the Mamod one, we can see there is actually no sight glass anywhere to be found. So that means we need to approach this slightly differently to how we would with the steamboat. A little tip to working these model steam engines. Rather than putting cold water in it and using all your methylated spirits up, just heating up the water, heat it up in a kettle first and we use hot water. So while we're waiting for that to boil, I'll show you a couple of other things on the model. To fill the boiler up on this, we just take off the little filler cap here, which also doubles up as a pressure relief valve. So if the pressure does get too high, it will open the spring mechanism and relieve the pressure, which will prevent the boiler from exploding and covering your face in scalding hot water. Right, time to put in the water. This is hot, so I've got my little funnel here. Another way of doing it is actually using a large plastic syringe, but I haven't got one of those handy, so I'm going to use this instead. And just pour it in the top like this. So I've put in way too much water, you see it's overflowing. Um, it's difficult to tell with this, but there's a trick I can do, which is basically just tip it up, turn the flywheel, and just drain some of that excess water out. There we go, that should be enough. And see, the water line is probably about three quarters of the way up, just about. It's difficult to see. So I'm going to put the cap back on. You don't need to tighten this with tools, you just do it finger tight. If you do it too tight, it can interfere with the relief pressure relief valve, so we don't want to be doing that as I would like my face to stay intact. I'm just going to lubricate the moving parts with this specific Mamod steam oil, but any old oil would do. I'm going to tip it up, put some inside the bore so the cylinder gets a nice amount of it. And as you can see, this is an extremely oily engine. And then you can just put every moving part, you can just put a little blob. I'm probably being a little bit excessive here, but it's better safe than sorry. So 
all the moving parts now have oil on them and we're ready to light the thing. Okay, so I'm just going to light the tray, put that underneath the boiler. So if I just talk about how this actually works, so the cylinder itself actually gyrates. So if I turn it round, the steam will come up this pipe here and it will push the cylinder down, like this, the piston down turning the crank and then as it goes round the, the cylinder actually gyrates up and down and when it comes up the steam will come out the little hole just above the pipe. So it depends where it's covering. It doesn't have valves in a conventional way that a steam engine does. And in, Actually this is a, a two stroke engine as opposed to a one stroke which most steam engines are. With these more basic models there's no pressure gauge like some of the more expensive steam models have so you really just need to kind of keep an eye and an ear out to know when it's going to go. If the pressure relief valve starts steaming you know it's definitely up to pressure but turning the flywheel just a little bit at a time you can see that it's trying to move on its own every now and again. If you leave it in a position like this when the steam does go it will push that down. But if it hasn't got enough momentum, it will just get stuck in that position. So you just have to be patient and let it warm up properly. Okay, so this model doesn't have a throttle on it, so it's just full throttle all the time. So it does get a bit, does get a bit crazy if you put in too much heat. So. Yeah. There we go. Now that the mess are beginning to run low, the fire's not quite as violent as it was, and you can hear the steam engine is slowly but surely running out of steam. So these are actually really fun models, they're great for kids to learn about steam engines but obviously they do require constant uh, adult supervision because you've got fire, you've got scalding hot water, uh, things getting pressurised and uh, also the entire thing gets way too hot to touch. Ow! Yeah. Just one thing to remember is when it's run out and you want to fire it up again don't just put in more fuel for the fire, you need to make sure that the water level is correct. So this would be a case of making sure it's completely depressurized before opening it, and then making sure you put the right amount of water in, and if it's already hot, don't put cold water in there, put hot water in, otherwise the change of temperature could damage the metal. So we could run this off paraffin solid fuel tablets, but I actually find using metal... Ugh.